a guy who actually was a very big donor to the Democrat Party and initially looked like he might actually get off. I'm talking about Sam Bankman Freed of F fame. It has just come out, ladies and gentlemen, this guy who had this crypto, what's the way to describe it? A crypto exchange, right? Where he just kind of apparently lost like billions of dollars and people were left high and dry. He has just been sentenced to 25 years. And this is a big, big deal because 25 years, you compare and contrast it, say, with Jeffrey Skilling, who had all kinds of shenanigans going on as the president of Enron. He got 14 years. He actually initially got 24. Elizabeth Holmes, who also was defrauding investors, she got 11 years and three months. Martha Stewart, you know Martha Stewart, she's made a heck of a comeback. I mean, hey, she's, she's on the cover of Sports Illustrated. <clears throat> not, not necessarily anything you want to see, but hey, she looks good for her age, I guess. But again, <laughs> that gets me on to ESG and the nonsense. I'll bring that up to you in a moment. But Martha Stewart got five months. Bernie Madoff, 150 years, went down in his history as the biggest Ponzi scheme ever heard of. Well, Sam Bankman Fried, there's an interesting book written on him by Michael Lewis. And Michael Lewis took a lot of criticism because they're like, oh, you know, you're too positive on him. But I, I read the book and basically, I think one of the fundamental problems for someone like Sam Bankman Fried, and I wouldn't be surprised if Sean Combs has some of the same issues, is that he was kind of like void of any real feeling. And he just kind of saw life as a mathematical equation. And you have, you know, some good over here and some bad over here and it all evens out. And he approached his business in this sort of constant mathematical equation way. What's fascinating is actually they did recover the majority of funds and you know, they went missing and then they were recovered. They've recovered, I want to say 90 cents on the dollar. So that's pretty massive, pretty significant. Um, and you're talking about some 7.3 or $7.8 billion. So worth noting, my, my dear friend, Rob, who I started 76 research with go there as well. If you're interested in investing, you need the primer. Even if you're not interested in investing, you should go there and get all the free stuff you can from 76 research.com. I was talking recently with Rob about this, who had invested in, um, sort of a, a vehicle that enables you to collect on the assets that they were getting from the, the currency that, that had gone missing. It was sort of another way to play this. And he was very successful with it. Anyway, it, it's fascinating because they were able to recover quite a bit of this. Um, so if you haven't yet gone to 76research.com, I encourage you to do that. My baby there, I'm the co-founder of this firm. And I felt so passionately for so long that investors deserve a better shot at having some equity and fairness in their portfolios. I mean, you think about these big companies, right? Like BlackRock that control so much. What is it? $10 trillion in assets that they have under management. And I know Larry Fink, I've interviewed him many, many times over the years. He kind of got this ESG stuff from Europe and said, okay, well, we're going to implement this here. And won't this be great? You know, we'll just invest in ESG DEI friendly companies and that will be better for everyone. Except that it's not because when you're so focused on this ESG nonsense, you totally lose sight of the fact that companies have to turn profits. Okay. And profits are what make the world go around. Now they're all about money, but let's be honest. I mean, Disney, what are you thinking? Disney, you've lost a billion plus dollars there. That one's for you, Don. Don hates Disney. <laughs> he, he actually messaged in one of the chats or in one of the notes just yesterday. Do you know that Disney lost $1.3 billion on their films? Yeah. And you know what? Bob Iger may have hit his you know, wall, so to speak. There's a big shareholder meeting coming up. I believe it's April 3rd. And Nelson Peltz, who's like, this company's gone way too woke. It's not making what it should. It's not being valued the way it should because they've got this wokeness in the way of everything else. Nelson Peltz may win that. So if he gets a board seat, whoo, all bets are off. You know, we might actually be able to go to Disney films. Imagine that. <laughs> you know, they, they, they really haven't had much as of late now, have they? You could blame March, 2020 and the closure of all the studios. But I actually blame not just that I blame the woke ideology that has infected the entire staff at many of these companies. It's like Bud Light all over again. Remember what happened with Bud Light? You had Alyssa Heiner Schneid saying, Oh, you know, we don't want those fratty guys anymore. It's like too many Alyssa's running the place at Disney that say, we don't, 
we don't want those families from the Midwest anymore. Well, without those families from the Midwest, guess what, Disney, you got not a zilch. Zero. So this is why you have to think about these things when you're investing. 